Good morning and welcome to my masterclass. This is Haley Swanson with the series Big Ideas in a Green Jacket. Today's episode was supposed to be a lesson in African talking drums. And if you get the chance, I still encourage you to go look them up. They're very cool. They're also real. But if you haven't figured it out by now, um, these are troubled times. So all that being said, it is my pleasure to introduce today a masterclass that is a practical skill, a favorite hobby of mine, and something that just might make your next meal a little easier. That skill, of course, is urban fishing. Now, right off the bat, you're probably saying, Miss Swanson, I don't really know a lot of urban fishers. And you're right, because a lot of people don't realize that you can, in fact, fish in a city. It's actually quite possible, and the fishing scene here, as the kids would say, is lit. But because we kind of have the stigma of, oh, concrete jungle, I can't fish here, nobody really gets the most out of the environment. Also, believe it or not, fish are everywhere in cities. I would venture to say that we have fish in every big city in at least America, if not the world. In fact, I'm pretty sure the whole world's cities have fish. And I do have research to back this up. Here on the projector, you can see a couple different examples. Here are fish from Tokyo, land fish from Tokyo. Um, we also find similar things in London, and this is what we call a deconstructed fish dinner from um, British Columbia, Canada. Point of that being, the next time someone tells you it's dumb to fish in a city, you've got at least three options right off the top of your head that prove them pretty wrong. Okay, step one, dress code. Dress code is incredibly important. It's also very simple, so don't panic. It basically boils down to two words, more flannel. Essentially, the more flannel you are wearing, um, the more the fish does feel like it's in a rural environment because yeah, the fish do live in the city, but I think you and I both know, most of them grow up in oceans and ponds. I do actually have a closet here, so hold on just a moment. There are some experts out there that will try to tell you like, button all of them, academics. You really just need the first one buttoned and then maybe the last one and sometimes one in the middle, and then um, you're good. And just so we're not wasting time right now, um, if you look over there, this is scientifically proven too. This is a chart that my team put together in 2017. You'll see there's a pretty clear correlation between the number of fish caught and the number of flannels you're wearing. There's a dip kind of at that midway mark because sometimes people get kind of hot and they take a flannel off midway through the day, but um, they pretty much fix that within an hour or two and put the flannel back on and then the graph can just continue. Sometimes they get stuck and you get a nice little urban fishing bicep, but mostly it cuts off your circulation. You may need to rearrange one, two, three. Also pro tip, if you have one, save a plain covered flannel for last. Doesn't look as cool, but it's definitely great camouflage. If you need to pause for a minute and go get your own flannels, please feel free. The next thing you're going to need to do is make a rod. Um, yes, I did say make. Again, this isn't your um, country puddle. This is urban fishing. This actually fell off of my curtains, my blinds, and I haven't been able to get it back on. For a line, find some decrepit wire, something that doesn't really have a use anymore. I mean, Look at that, look at the size of that little plug. No one uses that these days. And um, how you attach them is up to you. As far as bait goes, um, an urban fish isn't really going to be tempted by your average little piece of corn fritter or fly even. So my favorite lure, believe it or not, is actually a tax rebate. I just write something down, put it on the end of my line. They love it. I did two award you and that that's a pretty good lure I actually worked a pretty long time before I figured this one out one last thing that would be uh, silly for me to forget and that is safety first we want to be safe we want to respect our neighbors we want to respect the fish that we're about to digest if you're ever unsure um, just remember the acronym fish and you'll be fine first and foremost 
fearlessness. It's a crazy jungle out there. And again, a lot of people are not urban fishermen, so they may not understand you. That being said, I insurance, you might get run over. You might step in a storm drain. You might, um, you know, accidentally damage a fish's property. And it's okay for you to take the fish, but there are ridiculous property laws surrounding anything they own. Personally, I get my insurance through El Pescado. It is a um, Ecuadorian-based urban fisher license program. Covers everything at a super, super minimal cost. You'll find their information. Um, I'll probably put it below somewhere. Safety. Watch out for your friends. Watch out for yourself. And lastly, Hygiene, especially in these difficult times, make sure that you're fishing six feet apart from the person next to you, and if possible, don't sneeze on the fish. So now that we've covered the basics, let's go practice.